Welcome to the Bentley Systems training course where we are going to show you how to load and analyze steel bridge structures in STAD Pro Connect Edition. This course is specifically designed for the students that are competing in the ASCE AISC Student Steel Bridge Competition. In this first video, we're going to be focusing on creating our load cases and creating our load items. The sample bridge model and imposed loading on the structure for this training course may not fully comply with the steel bridge competition rules. You're going to want to please refer to the current year's ASCE student steel bridge competition rules for the complete problem statement and specification. If we were to take a look in the competition rules, they are going to describe several scenarios of how the bridge will be loaded for both a vertical load test and a lateral load test. We're going to show you how to create both of these different types of load cases within a STAD Pro model. And we're going to start with our vertical load test. Now the vertical load test is going to include the superimposed load that is going to be applied onto the bridge structure during the competition. But we're also going to want to make sure that we include the weight of the steel grating, the self weight of the structure, and anything else that's permanently attached. We are now going to turn our attention to the sample bridge model that we created in the previous training course. We are now at the point in our workflow where we're ready to model our loading for both our vertical and our lateral load tests. To start this process, we're going to go to our workflow page control area and select the loading tab. When this tab is selected, we're going to find our load and definition dialog over in the data area on your screen. Now the first thing we're going to do is we're going to set up our load cases that we need. Now for this training cap class, we're going to take one of the vertical load scenarios. But on your realistic model, you're going to want to model each of the different load tests that might be applicable. To create a load case, we're going to highlight our load case details section, and then we're going to click on the add button. For our particular model, we're going to be creating two load cases. I'm going to create one to simulate a vertical load test, and we're going to create a lateral load test. Now I'm going to enter the title of the load case. In my first load case, I'm going to start with number one. Now the loading type is used by STAD Pro for automatic generation of load combinations, which we won't be using in this workflow. So we're just going to leave our loading type set to none. Once we're done, we'll go ahead and click the add button, and then we'll create any additional load cases you want. If you want additional vertical load tests, to be modeled, if you want additional lateral load tests, you're going to want to create them as separate load cases. Once you create each load case, you're now ready to add load items within them to simulate the loading that's going to be acting on your structure. I'm going to start with my vertical load test case. I'm going to highlight the load case and then click on the Add button. Now the first loading type I'm going to add for my model is the self weight of the structure. So I'm going to highlight self weight and I'm going to make sure that it's acting in the Y direction and that the factor is set to negative 1. This will simulate a downward acting force. Once I enter all the parameters, I'll go ahead and click the Add button. Now, in addition to that, I'm also going to use some other loads to represent either the grading that's going to be applied or any type of superimposed load that's going to be applied to the structure. Now, I have a variety of loading types that I could utilize to simulate this. I could apply nodal loads, which would basically be a point load on a node in the model. I can apply member loads, and these would be applied on individual analytical members. It could be for the full length of the member a partial length of the member, and it could either be a constant force or a uniform or a linearly varying or trapezoidal force. Or I can also go with a physical member load. Now to make the loading a little bit easier, in the last course we actually created physical members for our top cord members that will be supporting these loads. So I'm going to go ahead and use the physical member load option. 
the first load magnitude I'm going to enter is negative 0 0.258 kips per foot. I've calculated that as the magnitude of load that I want to be able to support. Next, I'm going to locate it along the length of the member. Now, D1 would be from the starting end of the member, and then D2 would be, you know, kind of the end of the load, again, measured from the starting end of the member. I'm going to enter D1 as 6.5 feet and D2 at 9.5 feet. D3, we can enter this if your load would be specified as eccentric to the member. If it's going to be concentric or acting along the centroid of the member, you're going to enter D3 as zero. The last thing we're going to do is enter the direction of the load. And I'm going to enter mine with the GY. This means the global Y direction. Again, I gave my load a negative sign that would be a downward acting force. I'm going to finish this up by clicking add. And I'm going to enter in whatever other loads I need to specify. So I'm going to enter negative 0.1 seven five for my next load and I'm going to enter this as three feet and six feet. I'm going to click the add button and then for this one I'm going to assume that I'm done with this type of load. Now once you specify a load in STAD Pro most of your loading types are going to have a little question mark symbol next to the load item. This basically means that this load now needs to be assigned to the model. I'm going to start with my self weight of the structure. Now for the self weight, I want the weight of every single member in the model to be included. So I'm going to come down here to my assignment methods. And if I pick assign to view, it basically is going to grab everything in the model and consider it a candidate for self weight. Now the way the program calculates self weight is it's going to take your cross sectional area of each member and multiply it by the density of the material. Now the density of the material is defined through the material properties. So I'm going to go ahead and say assign to view. I'm going to click on the assign button and I'll go ahead and click yes. Next I'm going to select my first physical member load. Now this is going to be assigned to my top cord members. Now I only have two physical members in my model, and both of them are getting this load. Actually, both of them are getting both of these loads. Now, this type of load can only be assigned to physical members, so I can go ahead and assign it to view, and it's still only going to grab my two physical members. It's not going to assign them to anything else. So I'm going to go ahead and select this physical member load. I'm going to go ahead and say assign to view, and we'll click yes. Now, if this type of load didn't apply to every physical member of the model. Of course, you can use any of your other selection methods. Now, after the loads are created, you should be able to see the load arrows on your screen just by highlighting the particular load case that you're taking a look at. Now, if you want to see more information for each individual loading type, you can go to the View tab in the ribbon toolbar and click on your label settings icon. And if you want to turn on your load values, you're able to do that. We're now going to switch our attention over to the lateral load test requirements. For the lateral load test, we're going to want to include the self weight of the structure, plus any type of uniform or concentrated forces as described in the current rules. We are now going to highlight the lateral load test load case within our load and definition dialog. And then we'll go ahead and click on the add button. Now within the lateral load case, we're still going to apply self weight as it's still acting on the structure. So we're going to enter it in the Y direction with a factor of negative one. In addition to that, we're also going to add some uniform forces and some concentrated loads. Again, we're going to use the physical member option since we went ahead and created those physical members in the previous course. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to enter a physical member uniform load. We're going to give it a magnitude of negative 0.033, and then we're going to describe its location along that top cord member. Again, it's going to be acting for this load in the global Y direction. In addition to that, we're going to add another uniform force. We're going to enter negative 
0.008 kips per foot. And we're going to locate that at the same location. And that's also acting in the global y direction. We're now going to finish this off with our lateral force. And here we're going to still be in the physical member load group. And we're going to go to the concentrated force option. Here I'm going to enter the magnitude of concentrated force. I'm going to enter 0 0.05 kips. And I'm going to locate it for D1 at 9 feet from the starting end of my bridge. This is going to be happening in the global Z direction. If I take a look at this axis tripod, it's basically going to be pointing this way. Let's go ahead and click the Add button, and then we're going to click Close. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and grab the self-weight and assign it to the entire model. So I'm going to grab my self-weight, say Assign to View, and we'll click Assign. Next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my next uniform force. And I'm going to basically just select this far end physical member. Now, I need my physical member cursor to do this. So I'm going to unselect everything. I'm going to go up to my ribbon toolbar and click on my select menu bar item. And then I'm going to find this cursor. This is my physical member cursor. So you can see here how my icon for my cursor changed the graphics. And that'll allow me to select a physical member instead of just an individual analytical member. So I'm going to select that member. I'm going to Next, I'm going to assign my first uniform physical member load, and I'm going to assign it to this physical member, not both of them, just this back one. So I'm going to highlight that particular load, then I'm going to say use cursor to assign. Once I'm done, I'm going to go ahead and click the assign button, and I'm going to select the physical member along the back truss. You're going to notice that it's going to add a one here that's actually for physical member one. Once I'm done, I want to toggle off this assigning mode. So I'm going to go ahead and click the assigning mode again, and then that completes the assignment. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and assign this load to the closer physical member. So I'm going to repeat that same process. I'm going to say use cursor to assign. I click the assign button. I'm going to select this physical member. Now this option will only select physical members since physical loads can only be assigned to physical members. And again, you want to make sure you toggle that mode off when you're complete. Lastly, I'm going to grab this physical member load. I'm going to use my cursor to assign again. And I'm going to click the Assign button. And again, I'm going to select this physical member and put physical member 2. And then I can toggle off that mode. Now, what we're seeing on our screen is we are actually seeing the loads as they are being applied. But what's happening is the scales of the loads that are being displayed in the graphical window are not set quite appropriately for the magnitudes of the loads we have. If you'd like to exaggerate the view of your load arrows to make sure you applied them the way you were anticipating, we can always adjust the arrows. To do that, we can go ahead and right click in your main display area, and we're going to select structure diagrams here. And we have a tab for scales. Now, the way the scales work, I like to slide this off to the side and click on the Apply Immediately checkbox. And basically, what you want to do is you want to decrease the scale until the load arrow size increases to the point that you like it. So say for my um, distributed force, maybe I want to push that down and you see how the load arrows are getting larger. Um, more exaggerated helps me see to make sure. And I can see the arrows are pointing down, so that's helpful for me. We can do the same thing for the point force. I'm going to keep pushing that down until I start seeing it. And here you can see that point force appearing. I'll just go ahead and select my beam forces and I can see force diagrams on my screen. Now I can change the different types of force that This video is part of the Modeling Steel Bridge Structures video series. 
A link to the series playlist is available here. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.